All right, so let's go ahead and answer this 2006 FRQ from the AP Calculus AB test question two. So the problem says, let f be the function defined by x is greater than or equal to zero, with f of zero equaling five, and f prime, the first derivative of f, given by f prime of x equals e to the negative x over four times sine of x squared. And the graph of the f prime of x is shown right here. So we're going to be using this throughout the problem, and we could go ahead and start to answer part A. So part A says use the graph of f prime to determine whether the graph of f is concave up, concave down, or neither on the interval of where x is between 1.7 and 1.9. And we have to explain our reasoning. So here for part A, we are going to be using the graph of f prime. And we're looking at the interval from 1.7 to 1.9. So as we can see here, 1.7 is probably about here. 1.9 is probably about here. And we can tell that the slope is decreasing. Therefore, the, um, the graph would be concave down at this point. So here we can go to answer. by saying on the interval where x is between 1.7 and 1.9 f prime is decreasing thus f because that's what we're trying to answer, is concave down on this interval. So that's how we answer part A. We're just using the graph of f prime here to answer this. So if we go ahead and move on to part B, Part B is saying on the interval where x is between 0 and 3 inclusively, find the value of x at which f has an absolute maximum and justify your answer. So we can go ahead and throw this up there again. So for B, we're looking at the interval of 0 to 3. And we have to look for the absolute maximum on this interval. So absolute maximum is different from relative maximum. And for this, we're going to have to be using the function of f, not f prime, when we're looking for the values of y. And for this, absolute maximum, we know that a maximum is whenever we're going from positive to a negative point. So we're, go we're going to be looking for this absolute maximum. And Ultimately, to find these um, these points, we have to look for the critical numbers. So let's just write down another key term that we have to know. Key numbers, critical numbers. And for this, critical numbers are whenever the first derivative of the function equals 0. And if we go ahead and write down our f prime of x function, it equals e to the negative x over 4 times sine of x squared. So here we can see that this function is going to equal 0 whenever this, this part of the function is equal to 0. So we're just going to equate sine of x squared equal to 0. And we know that um, sine is at zero whenever sine is at zero whenever we are at zero pi two pi and so on so here x squared equals zero pi two pi so on and then for this we will find that our x is going to equal zero 
radical pi, radical 2 pi, and once again so on. Alright, so for this we now know our bends in the graph. And if we use if we use this, we can find that yes, we have our endpoint here. We have another where it's going from positive to negative right here, and that's radical of pi. And then it's going negative to positive at radical two pi. So for this we're only going to be needing to look at our radical pi. So we have to do f of radical pi, because that's when it's going from positive to negative. We also have to look at our endpoints. So as you can see, our interval is from 0 to 3. So we're going to do f of 0 and f of 3. All right, so the problem already gives us f of 0, and it says that f of 0 equals 5. So we're good on that. And then our f of radical pi is going to be the f of 0 plus our integral function. So it's from 0 to radical pi of our derivative function dx. And then on our f of 3, we have f of 0 plus our integral function, 0 to 3 of our f prime of x dx. And whenever we use our calculator, we will get the values of f prime of radical pi, or f of radical pi, and f of 3. So we have, for f of radical pi, we have 5.679, and we have 5.579 for f of 3. As we can see here, the greatest value of the 3 is right here at 5.679, and that is whenever x equals radical pi. And for that we can go ahead and conclude that the graph of f has an absolute maximum at x equals radical pi. And that is how we answer part b of the question. So we can go ahead and move on to part c. Uh, part c is saying write an equation for the line tangent to the graph of f at x equals 2. So for part c we can go ahead and write what we need. We're looking for the equation of the tangent line. Uh, equation to, of the tangent line on the graph of f at x equals 2. So to write the equation of the tangent line, we need the value of x, the value of y, and the value of our slope, which can just be dy dx. And the value of x is given in the problem, so x equals 2. Our value of y is going to be found by plugging in 2 to our f function. So f of 2 equals y. Thus, y equals, just like we did in the last part, f of 0 plus the integral function of 0 to 2 of our f prime of x dx. And whenever we use our calculator, this value that the calculator is going to give us is 5.623. So we can go ahead and write that we have our value of y, 5.623. And then now we have to find our value of our slope. So we know that our dy dx is basically the f prime of x. And that was the e to the negative x over 4 
times sine of x squared. Now we can go ahead and plug in 2, and we will get e to the negative 2 over 4 times sine of 2 squared. And whenever we further simplify this, we're going to get closer to finding the value of the slope, e to the negative 1 half times sine at 4. And using our calculator, we will find that this is negative 0 0.459. This is our dy dx value, negative 0 0.459. And now we can go ahead and use all those values to find the equation for the line tangent to the graph of f at x equals 2. We have y minus ry, the y sub 1, which is 5.623. And then we have our slope times all of x minus 2. And that's the equation of the tangent line, and that's how we answer this 2006 FRQ from the AP Calculus test.